Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we are starting with a physique update of Samson Dauda at 320 pounds right now in the off season, and those are really good looking 320 pounds. Samson right now is looking absolutely amazing. I am expecting, honestly, guys, I, I think this is my prediction. I think this guy might crack the top six this year. <laughs> this year it's so tough to even place top 10 at the Mr. Olympia. There are too many great bodybuilders, but the way Samson is looking right now, I don't know, I can see him battling Ian for that seventh, and then the actual top six is gonna be really tough to crack, like he would have to beat somebody like William Bonac, Nick Walker, and Hunter Labrada, and that really sounds like Mission Impossible, but really, take a look at this guy. I mean, he has amazing shape, beautiful flow, beautiful lines, crazy symmetry, a complete physique, and last year he figured out conditioning pretty much, if he comes even leaner, if he comes with his glutes peeled, and also his back a little bit improved, and just overall bigger, if he fills out his frame more, which I think he is doing, look at him, he's massive right now, 320 guys, at 5 foot 11, this is big, this is one big big bodybuilder, and yeah, his weaknesses are, his glutes are never really shredded, that's something he needs to fix, and his back could be better, could be bigger, but if he fixes these two things, guys, he's going to be, I don't want to say unstoppable, but he's going to be really really good. If he improves those just a little, I can see him in top 6, top 7, if he improves those completely, if he comes with great back and great looking glutes, he can be top 3 even. Look at this most muscular too, he looks really good in this most muscular, he looks massive, round, he looks insane really at this point. I don't know for how long have you guys been following Samson, but when I saw him for the first time, I thought this guy has basically everything to be like the Mr. Olympia, he needs to improve, sure, but he has all the tools necessary, and a couple of years later, he improved so much, and this year at the Arnold, he took fourth, which was kind of a message to everybody else to watch out for this guy, he can be very dangerous, and look at him now, this was a proper off-season, his coach is Milos Sharchev, and I talked about this before, if you want to grow as fast as possible, you hire Milos Sharchev, and also if you want to diet as hard as you can, then also you hire Milos Sharchev, because Milos has a very extreme approach to things, and as you can see, it's working, Samson is finally filling out his large frame, and once this frame is completely filled out, who can stop this guy, really, who can stop this guy with this perfect structure, basically, as you can see, though his back is his weakness, it's definitely the weakest body part of his, but I'm sure some of this gained weight is back muscle, I'm sure some of that weight is actually back tissue, I'm sure his back is gonna look better on stage, how much better is gonna be better enough to beat some of these guys, I don't really see him beating William Bonek and Hunter and Nick, but 7th place, you know, seems pretty reasonable for a guy that looks like this right now. Here's what it looked like in the lineup at the Arnold Classic this year, 2022, so all of these guys except for Justin were able to beat him. Now, as far as Steve Kuklo, I think you can make an argument that Samson could have beaten him, but you know, Steve Kuklo is really a big name, he has been doing this for a long time, he was also 6th at the Mr. Olympia at one point, so maybe they gave it to him because of his name, but you know, as far as William Bonac and Brandon Curry, I don't think he could have beaten these two guys, not yet, especially not Bonac. Yeah, I know what I said. I think Bonac was far better than Brandon at this show. Anyways, uh, here is the problem of Samson Dauda. The problem starts when he turns around. When he turns his back towards the judges, you can see his weaknesses, and they are underdeveloped back and underconditioned glutes. So as you can see, this photo on the left, this was 2018, so his back was really poor back then, and also his glutes were really fat, <laughs> but now, 2021, he improved significantly, he, his glutes are looking a little bit sharper, and his back is definitely looking much bigger, but his legs from the front, everything from the front is more conditioned than his glutes, he is definitely holding the most amount of fat in those glutes, and his back, even though it's improved, it looks good, his physique kind of reminds me of Flex Wheeler, I, I gotta add that too, uh, even though his back is good now, it's better, everything else is just bigger, so that's a weakness. But, you know, everybody has a weakness, and Samson is improving his, but from the front, especially in this most muscular, he looks really impressive, really massive, and I think he's gonna be battling for that top 7 at the Mr. Olympia this year, what do you guys think, what is your prediction for Samson Dauda?
If you guys were in a search for a good multivitamin, multimineral complex, search no more. I got a thing just for you. Vintage Base. It is basically all the vitamins and all the minerals that you can think of. Plus, it has a probiotic in it to make your digestion better. So, guys, if you want to try this out, if you want to support my channel, go on the link in the description of this video and use the code EVEN for a 12% discount. Alright, next thing I wanted to talk about is Jeremy Potwin, who is preparing for his Men's Physique show. Why am I talking about the Men's Physique guy? Is he a high-profile case like Jeremy Buendia? No. Am I gonna start following Men's Physique from now on? No, not really. Why am I mentioning this guy is two things. First of all, he has such an amazing structure, such an amazing classic look, crazy freaky lines, crazy ridiculously small waist compared to the shoulder width. Also, his chest is insane. Also, his chest is absolutely insane. It's cartoonish. And the other reason why I'm gonna talk about this guy is because he failed to fulfill his promise. He announced transitioning to classic physique. Several bodybuilding YouTube channels and news outlets talk about this. I talked about this. I was excited about seeing him finally in those classic trunks, but he didn't do it for whatever reason. So as you can see in this, in this photo right here, this was November last year. He says, I have a long way to go for classic, but we'll get there. The work is non-stop and he talks about how small his legs get when he gets shredded. And of course, it's, it's normal, it happens. Your weakest body part, when you grow it a little and you start dieting aggressively, that's the first body part that will disappear. It's normal. This was him when he first started his transformation. Uh, I don't know if he was even training legs here, maybe a little bit here and there, but not seriously. His calves are especially small, but his, his quads look like they can be built. You know, quads, hamstrings, glutes, everything uh, above the knee looks like it can be grown, it can be built if he works hard on it. So he started training those legs seriously. And they grew. A few months later, they were basically doubled in size. He grew them so much. And then he decided to compete in men's physique again. I asked him this. I said, you promised. You, you made a statement. You said you were switching to classic physique. Why the hell are you doing men's physique again? And he said he is not ready for it. But of course he wasn't ready. I mean, he grew his legs, but of course they would go away because he built them in such a short time. If he wanted his legs to stay big when he gets shredded, first he needs to keep them big for a longer time. You know, you can't build anything in 2-3 months and then get shredded and expect it to stay there. Most people can't do that. So he needs to uh, do his off-season for at least, at least a year, if not two years, if he's serious about switching to classic, if he really wants that. And the other thing is, grow them even more, make them disproportional, make them twice the size that they are here, so when you get shredded, even if you lose a lot, it will still look good, they will still look big. But no, he decided to take a shortcut, he decided to start cutting after like 6 months of bulking, and it's really a shame, you know. Man's physique, I get it, I mean, it's a, it's a good division if you fit in it, but if you have such a physique like this guy, if you have such freaky looking packs, and if you have small waist, great V taper, and you can make it a good X taper as well, why not do classic physique? It's way more fun. You get to pose, you get to do bodybuilding poses. And I know for a fact that this guy loves posing. He has so many videos and photos of himself hitting uh, bodybuilding poses, and he looks amazing in those. I mean, nothing looks as good as his chest and his shoulders, arms, and uh, crazy small waist is also really impressive. But his back is not weak either. His back is also really good. So the only thing that he needs to improve is his legs, and I know he can do it if he stays consistent for a long time and if he doesn't keep breaking his word. Basically, he, he announced this, he promised this to his fans, to his followers, and we were expecting him to actually do what he said. So, I still hope he will do classic physique in the future, if not this year, maybe he will realize that he needs a longer off-season to actually grow those legs, and if he really wants to, I know he can be a great classic physique competitor, and I would be really interested to see that happen. What do you guys think? Would you like to see him in classic physique, or do you think he should stay in man's physique? Alright, next let's talk about the Kim Williams, who is 4 weeks out of Tampa Pro this year. 
So I'm not saying this is a physique update that is current. This was posted by Suliose Instagram page, which is very reliable Instagram page, bodybuilding updates kind of page. And uh, they say, Akim Williams looking huge as usual, a hashtag update. So is this recent? I doubt that because he looks too lean for this point. It could be recent, I don't know. William didn't post this, only this page posted it. Maybe he sent it to them so they posted it, I don't know. Uh, but I do know that he's competing in four weeks because he said this. He posted this squatting video and as you can see here in the comments, somebody asked uh, what is his next show and he says hopefully Tampa in four weeks. Now, what I found very interesting about this video is before he starts squatting, take a look at his arms. What the hell is going on with that bicep, the right bicep there? Left one too, but mainly the right one, you can see right one. What is going on with that? What is happening there? Do you think this is a normal looking bicep? Pay attention once again in slow motion. Look at this. It looks kind of like tumorish mass. Uh, I don't know, not, not pretty looking, not normal looking for sure. Things that come to my mind is like he had a bicep injury, so it looks swollen for but two biceps. No, no, it doesn't make sense. Uh, is it scar tissue, <laughs> which is what many people are saying about Hardy's shoulders and, and, and arms? Why would it be scar tissue? Why would he be injecting gear in his biceps? Makes absolutely no sense. Uh, is it simply weird shape because he's a genetic freak? Or is it the obvious? Is it oil? Is it synthol? I don't know, but these biceps are not looking normal, not to me at least. You guys can go in the comment section and tell me what do you think it is, do you think it is Sintol or something else, if you have any suggestions, tell me in the comment section down below, but me personally, I'll just be honest, I know I'll get a lot of hate for this, but I'll be blunt and I'll say, I think this is some kind of sight enhancement oil. Hmm. Suspicious for sure. All right, next uh, we gotta talk about William Bonac. So this guy made a comeback this year, basically, at the Arnold. Everybody pretty much signed him off last year. I mean, he was sixth, but he didn't look very good. At the Arnold, you guys know my take. I think he looked the best. I think he looked better than Brandon. And if he comes even improved, which is a possibility, at a Mr. Olympia, he has a chance at the title. He did beat Big Remy before, I think a couple of times, actually. He won the Arnold Classic two times, in my opinion, three times, and he was runner-up at the Mr. Olympia, so don't sign this guy off, not just yet. Now, as far as his arms, I know what you're thinking, I'm not gonna say that I think this is oil, uh, it could be, it probably is a little bit of it at least, but that's besides the point, I mean, he looks good. Whatever he did, he made his arms look freaky, but they don't really look weird and, and, and soft, they look impressive, they look freaky, they don't really look natural, but they don't look bad, like you can still see uh, vascularity, you can see striation, it looks good, you know, and at 22 and a half weeks out of Mr. Olympia, as he says, he's still in the off-season mode, he looks freaking good, he looks round, he looks hard, but, you know, more importantly, the most important thing about William Bonac at this point is he looks big. He looks really big and full, which was kind of an issue last year. We all know he always comes conditioned. He was never soft. He's always shredded, basically. It's only about uh, how full and round and massive can he really be. And also, probably the most important thing at this point is, did he fix his gyno? He had a little bit of gyno at uh, this year's Arnold Classic and the judges after the show said that that's why he lost, that's why he didn't beat Brandon Curry, which I think is complete nonsense. Yeah, sure, he had a little bit of gyno, but I don't think that was the reason. I think it was politics, honestly. I think, I mean, yeah, it was visible, you could have seen it, but we saw this before. Bodybuilders placed ahead of other bodybuilders, even with the gyno, a little bit of gyno, it wasn't crazy gyno, but just in case, so they can't say the same thing next year, or actually this year the Mr. Olympia, he should fix that. I hope he did that, I don't know if he talked about it, but he said, he said in a post after the Arnold Classic that he is going to fix his gyno, and that he's going to, actually he said gyno, and that he's gonna come better at the Mr. Olympia, and if he does that, I think he actually has a legit chance at winning the Mr. Olympia title.
I think, correct me if I'm wrong and if you think otherwise, but I think Bonac at his best beats both Nick Walker and Hunter Labrada at least last year's editions of these two guys. Uh, Bonac at his best versus Brandon and Remy at their best and Hardy too, I don't know about that. Probably, probably not. The other guys have probably better structure, maybe he can battle Hadi, but as far as beating Brandon and Rami at their best, probably no. We have to wait and see how much Nick and Hunter improved at the Mr. Olympia, but the way the things are looking, I think Bonak is gonna be in that top 3, top 4 this year. What do you guys think? Whatever you think, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it guys, and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.